Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be computing the mass flow rate through the F1 rocket engine that was used to power the Saturn V. We'll be using some engine specs that are readily available online to compute this mass flow rate, and those are given here. The first is that the area ratio of the nozzle is 16, and this means that the exit area uh, is 16 times the throat area. The exit diameter is 3.7 meters. The stagnation pressure, which is the pressure in the combustion chamber or the reservoir, is 7 megapascals. And the engine uses an oxidizer of liquid oxygen and and a fuel of RP1, and the oxidizer to fuel ratio is 2.27 to 1 by mass. Here you can see the mass flow rate equation that I derived in my previous video, and it's a function of the stagnation pressure, stagnation temperature, throat area, specific heat ratio, and the specific gas constant. So we need to know these five variables in order to compute the mass flow rate. The stagnation pressure we know from the givens. The area at the throat, or A star, can be computed from the area ratio and the exit diameter. And then we're left with T naught, gamma, and R, which we can compute from something called the chemical equilibrium with applications code uh, that was developed at NASA Glenn. First thing we'll do is start with the calculation of the throat area, A star, so we know that the area ratio is equal to 16, where the exit area is equal to pi d squared over 4, where d is the exit diameter, and so if you plug in 3.7 meters in for the exit diameter, we get 10.75 meters squared for the exit area. We can rearrange the area ratio equation to give us the expression for the throat area is equal to the exit area over 16. We plug those numbers in, we get the throat area is equal to 0.672 meters squared. Just note that the numbers that I've given in this problem are from Wikipedia. There's other numbers out there that can be slightly different and they'll give you slightly different answers, but this is just to show you how you can do it. So now that we have A star, we need T naught, gamma, and R. So we're gonna jump over to cearun.grc.nasa.gov, which is the online version of the Chemical Equilibrium with Application Solver, or CEA. So now we're online on the CEA website. If I click on online CEA, it brings brings us to the website that I mentioned before on the whiteboard. The only thing that we need to do on this site page is type in a four character alphanumeric code of your own choosing. I'll just type in Josh. We don't need to change anything over here. We'll just click submit. Now we're on this page and the only thing that we want to specify is the uh, stagnation pressure and so we're going to use option two here. We only need to fill in one box because we know exactly what we want. So I'm going to fill in seven because our P naught is seven megapascals. Click submit. Now we need to choose the fuels. The fuel that we're using is RP1. We'll click submit. The oxidizer is liquid O2 or LOX. Click submit. And then in here, we're choosing our relative OF values. And so again, I'm going to specify one of these boxes here. And we know that it is 2.27 to one uh, oxidizer to fuel on a mass basis. And then we can click submit and don't change anything on here, click Submit. And then you can see that we have the output file here. We can click on it, and this is the output file. Now the values that we want are at the bottom here. If we scroll to the bottom, and you can see the thermodynamic properties, and note that these don't have the not next to them, but these are the stagnation values because we used the stagnation pressure. And so here, this should be the pressure that we input, so 70 bar is seven megapascals, so that's good. This is T naught, which is one of the things that we want. It's in Kelvin, it's 3,558.34 Kelvin, so make a note of that. This is rho naught in kilograms per cubic meter, or kilograms per meter cubed, 5.2492 kilograms per meter cubed, make a note of that. Uh, skip these guys here. This is the molecular weight, 22.186 kilograms per kilomole. And if we go down here to gamma, that's the specific heat ratio, that's 1.1507. So those are the values that, we'll, that we're going to be using in this example. So as we just saw from the online analysis, we can write the following. We have the universal gas constant, which we know is 8314 joules per kilomole Kelvin. The molecular weight of the mixture is 22.186 kilograms per kilomole. Stagnation temperature is 3558.34 Kelvin. Stagnation density is 5.2492 kilograms per meter cubed. And the ratio of the specific heats is 1.1507. So we know T naught and gamma, and we still need to know R, but we can compute R in two different ways. The first way that we can compute it is to take the universal gas constant divided by the molecular weight that we see over here, and we get a final solution of R is equal to 374.74 joules per kilogram Kelvin. We can also use the ideal gas law, P naught is equal to rho naught R T naught. Rearrange for R, get P naught over rho naught T naught. Since we have rho naught and T naught, and we also have P naught from the givens, we can compute R and you get the same thing. I just want to make a quick note about the gamma and the R that we calculated here. These are computed based 
based off of the reservoir conditions. These will actually change throughout the nozzle, so you'll have different values of gamma and R for the reservoir, the throat, and the exit. Now there's actually an option on the CEA website uh, that will compute these values for a rocket, so it'll give you the reservoir, the throat, and the exit values. And you'll note that these gammas and R's change throughout. So in our analysis, we're going to assume the gamma and the R are the values that we computed for the reservoir. And so in our analysis, we're essentially saying that gamma and R remain constant throughout the nozzle up until the exit. Now that we have all the variables that we need to compute the mass flow rate, we just plug it into the mass flow rate equation repeated here. And you can see that right here, I've just plugged in all those known values in for the values in here. And when you put this into your calculator, you get that the M dot from our analysis is 2,602 kilograms per second. And this compares to the M dot from Wikipedia of 2,578 kilograms per second pretty well. They're actually very close. So this just kind of shows you that you can get pretty close in terms of the mass flow rate just by assuming a simplified form of the mass flow rate equation and using some specs that you can find online. And just as a final quick little added bonus, we can also compute the mass flow rate through the uh, engine using the thrust and the specific impulse. So the thrust listed on the website is 6.77 mega newtons. The specific impulse at sea level is 263 seconds and the acceleration due to gravity at sea level is 9.81 meters per second squared. The equation is the specific impulse is equal to the thrust over m dot g. So if we rearrange for m dot, we get thrust over ig. Plugging in these values into that equation gives us a mass flow rate of 2,624 kilograms per second. So the main takeaway from this video is that you can compute a pretty accurate mass flow rate uh, from a simplified expression that compares well with given specs uh, online. Thanks for watching.